How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Here's the 13th and last round in this series of one minute, please. The overall score is six games to the men against five to the women with one game drawn. So this last game gives the women a chance to make the series a dead heat. The teams, last week's winning women's side, Martina Main, Violetta and windmill girl Margot Holden. On the men's team, last week's highest scorer, Gerard Hoffnung, and he's brought with him two new boys to the game, Jack Train and scriptwriter Eric Sykes. And it's mainly for their benefit that I repeat those words that can't be repeated too often, that one-minute speeches must be made without getting off the point, without hesitation and without undue repetition. Otherwise, the offender will be buzzed by the other side. Round one, then, and to begin it, the voice of the keeper of the password. The password for round one is string. S-T-R-I-N-G, string. Well, the first competitor to use that word by accident or design gets a bonus of three points for self and side, and in celebration, Ian Messeter will make the Welkin ring on the fire bell. <coughs> what a sure touch. Violetta, will you begin round one with a one-minute speech on race horses? Race horses are very beautiful animals because always at the back of your mind, you've got a lot of money. But also they can be very depressing animals because you can lose all your clothes on them, so people say. But I myself like brown race horses because they have friendly faces and usually black eyelashes, which are very pretty. <laughs> and um, they have long, long, slim legs, which I've always loved to have had and never did. <laughs> but, of course, grey race horses are very sweet too, but usually are a little nasty underneath because they wanted to be born brown and only <laughs> was born grey. And of course, very important to race horses also are the jockeys. And it's better to have small jockeys for the race horses I like because they will obviously be lighter. Point now, for Violetta. <laughs> Gerard Hoffnung, take a deep breath. Blowing up balloons. Start him, Maggie. Balloons many times. I am, they usually are blown up with air, you know, but I don't know whether you knew that, but I'm the only person at the BBC who could e extract gasoline. And uh, I did so about <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I blew up an enormous balloon with gasoline. I took a deep breath, you know. And uh, that's not it. And uh, I blew this balloon up, and my grandfather was a very vicious man. Um, brought along his uh, catapult, and he shot at this balloon, and the, all the air in, in the balloon went back I I inside of me. <laughs> and I, it was, yes, yes, and it was I who started to be blown up in a most disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was so much of a strain for me, ladies and gentlemen, that I fainted. Uh, I woke up and I was over some Thank you, dear oh. <laughs> Martina Main, will you delight us for one minute with the discourse on rackets? Oh, well, it's all a racket, isn't it? We're all in it. Uh, some playful people play with rackets, hitting tennis balls and shuttlecocks or something <clears throat> like that. And others run them. Uh, the idea of running a racket is to get something for nothing or to get a great deal for very little or, or to make money quick. And to be very clever, you have to look at a dirty, filthy bit of lino and call it furniture. You then get 300 pounds for it. Or if you're a poet, you call a peep out of an attic window at a procession around the corner you call that a coronation seat, and you can make thousands of pounds that way. Uh, I've always wanted to run records because uh, that would be quite useful to have the result of it. Uh, and I'm now advertising for a partner with some ideas because uh, all the other ideas have been used up. Uh, uh, Prospective partners, right, Miss Main, can you see you? There are three valuable points still going in this round for the password, and each subject I set should be a clue to help somebody get it. So far, the subjects have been race horses, blowing up balloons, and rackets. 
Eric Sykes, make your, de your debut, see if you can get it, and talk for one minute about bags. <laughs> bags. <laughs> well, without, without offending anybody, bags are carried under the eyes. And there are a lot of types of bags. There are flower bags, uh, carrier bags, and um, Oxford bags, and bags for the next ride. But uh, a lot of these bags are different from sacks. Now, a lot of people think that a bag is a sack, but it's... Who about? Margo Holden, why did you buzz? Uh, 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 a repetition of the word bag. Repetition of the word bag. Well, we'll put it to our jury. Hugh Burden, Laidman Brown, and Humphrey Lestock. Jury, hands up if you think Mr. Sykes was guilty of undue repetition. Only one hand goes up. He wasn't, so that is a point to Eric, and he continues for a further 31 seconds talking about bags. Well, as I said, there, there are different kinds of bags. Um, they're, they're also rag bags. Now, the fact is, if you drop a flower bag on the floor, it makes a noise that goes bag, which is different to sack. <laughs> Sack makes a, a definite noise of sack, which is different to bag, except when you've got a string around the top. Then it... I don't know whether that was accidental or, or design, but Mr. Sykes has got three points for getting the password, which is string, and anybody using that word between now and the end of the round is the cause of this horrid noise <coughs> and loses a point. Carry on, Eric, for another nine seconds. Lots of people have suits made out of bags, and I know a lot of friends of mine who like to wear them, and instead of having the lace around the top, they have ties. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Score at this point, six to the men against two for the women. Margot Holden, your ideas on fiddles. Fiddles? Oh, well, they're instruments that people play. They um, usually find them in orchestras. They're... Um, it's really a common name, fiddle, for um, a violin or a viola or something. Um, <clears throat> they, um... Well, Mr. Train, why do you I think that uh, Margot was, was technically wrong. Never mind about that. Fiddles on... I... <laughs> you don't call violas fiddles? You can't buzz her for being technically oh, wrong, I didn't Jack. Know the rules, I'm Repeating sorry. herself, undue hesitation, or getting off the point. Oh, uh, point? I don't mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I... Yeah. Right, as you're a new boy, we'll let you off. Remember, frivolous buzzing means the doghouse, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, Margot, for another 44 seconds. Fiddles are musical instruments. People play them. They, um, they consist of a, a wooden-shaped thing. I think they're made of a kind of a pine wood or something. And... <laughs> yes, Mr. Hoffman. Oh, something. I've only said Oh, it something once. week after week, she <laughs> says. Oh, something. <laughs> yes. Getting off the point. Pour some water on his head, Eric. You're next. <laughs> right, Jory, was Miss Hel Getting off the point. Or Getting off the point week after week. <laughs> oh, All right, well, it's your buzz. Every minute of the hour. Yes, yes, we've got the idea. <laughs> Jury, in your opinion, was Miss Holden getting off the point, hands up, if so? No hands they go up, she was. They don't go. They don't come here week <laughs> after week. <laughs> that is a point for Miss Holden, who continues for another 32 seconds. Talking about fiddles. Um, of course, there are other kinds of fiddles. There are fiddles when you do something that you're not supposed to be doing and you usually get something out of it. I think the biggest fiddle is this program, the way people stay in week after oh. week. <laughs> and, uh... Pour some more water on Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> May go on. <laughs> And, um, of course, there are the kind of fiddles when you sit and play with something or twiddle your fingers. That'll do, Margaret. Thank you. <laughs> Brought the score up to four to the women against six to the men. Jack Train, a few helpful notes from you on methods of keeping trousers up. Start in, Maggie. <laughs> uh, the first thing in keeping trousers up is to find a piece of rope. Not the other. <laughs> but if by any chance your trousers should fall down, 
I do say that owing to the embarrassment, your your, your pants would come in, your breath would come in short pants. <laughs> no, no, that's wrong. But, but there are other ways of keeping your trousers up if they fall down. First of all, bend down and pick them up. That's very important. <laughs> and after that, in my case, if I haven't any rope with me, I will have always carried two drawing pins, and having been on the BBC so long, my skin is so thick, I can stick them through <laughs> and the trousers stay up. But of course, there are other ways of keeping your trousers up. You can have balloons. Now, Mr. Hoffman had a balloon, and I'm going to ask him to blow up a couple just in case my trousers come down while I'm talking. Although, as I'm sitting, it won't matter very much. But at the same time, what am I talking about? Oh, yes, trousers. <laughs> now, when you have trousers that come down, pull them up. That is one of the greatest things in this world. Never let your trousers fall. <laughs> The end of round one with the men leading by seven points to four. And let's go over now to hear the keeper of the password with the password for round two. The password for round two is the pronoun I. Just I. <laughs> Gerard Hoffman, will you start round two with a personal piece, How to Annoy Margot Holden? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh. Uh, I wouldn't want to <laughs> A very surprised man. He's got three points. The password, ladies and gentlemen, is I, and anybody using it between now and the end of the round loses a point and is the cause of that horrid noise again. Right, Gerard, you've got 58 seconds to go, chum, and don't say I. Je... <laughs> Annoy Margot Holden if she says or something. <laughs> then je <laughs> then je would make her je would take her to the National Portrait Gallery. <laughs> je would make her lower her face three times until her nose touched the ground and announce <laughs> in a loud and clear voice, Oh Mother Earth. Je am indeed a wretched little twerp. <laughs> Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, je would not annoy Margot. Hold on. Well, Gerard got away with that, but uh, we're putting that little device of je out of bounds for the rest of this round. <laughs> Martina Main, who specialises in this sort of subject, leprechauns. Oh, they steal young women. Myself doesn't know what they do with them. Uh, they, when they're very bored, they sit on toadstools and do very difficult arithmetical sums. Uh, the latest fashion news in leprechaun land is the green look. They wear it from top to toe. Uh, they, they, they're very musical. They play the fiddle and they can speak about a dozen languages or so, and including Leprechaunese, which has a very difficult grammar. Um, myself in Leprechaunese would be you, and uh, you uh, would do in this round, wouldn't it? Uh, also, uh, they, they are Irish, but they do prefer Chinese food. They like Chinese food, and they're fascinated with chopsticks. And last year, they were very impressed by the Skylon, for instance. They like that sort of thing. Uh. Yes, Mr. Hoffman, what's on your mind? Je think <laughs> that she's a bit off the point. Oh. Well, we'll put that to the jury, oh, that's what they're there for. Jury, was Miss Main off the point? Hands up if so. No hands go up. <laughs> Carry on, Martini, you've got five seconds to go. You see, myself knows all about them, and leprechauns... Uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> Eric Sykes, always a useful thing to know. How to amuse guests at a party? Oh, good. Well, if we had guests at a party, and we had the sort of friends, if uh, we were alone at a party, and the guests came to me and said, um, what shall we do? Then we would say, let's have a game. So then the guests would say, well, you can't say we if you're alone. So I'd say... <coughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Maggie is busy removing a point from Mr. Sykes. Margot Holden, would you like to get your own back? How to annoy Gerard Hoffnum? <laughs> oh, that's easy. Well, all you've got to do is to say or oh, something or something or something. Because <laughs> absolutely stark raving mad. And um, then, of course, you could um, say you don't believe in his grandfather or you don't like his grandfather. He doesn't like that either. And... Um, Oh, you can also say that you don't like the tuba, you never will like the tuba, and you never have liked the tuba. <laughs> Gerard does. And <laughs> of course, you... Jack Train, what did you buzz? Undue hesitation. Jury, undue Even hesitation, laughing. hands up if so. <laughs> Only one hand goes up. Sorry, Jack, another point to Margot. Carry on, Margot, for another 25 seconds. You can annoy Gerard too by insulting his grandfather and um, by sitting pulling faces at him. Yes, Mr. Hoffman. Margot. Yes? I don't mind you insulting me, but would you please leave my grandfather? <laughs> <laughs> Hoffman, the doghouse is hovering. <laughs> For what are, of what are you accusing Margot? I wasn't. I was just giving her a hint. You're in the doghouse. <laughs> In the doghouse for two speeches and lose a point. We must have discipline. <laughs> Carry on, Margot. You can insult Gerard by doing just what you've done, by insulting his grandfather. And, um, of course, you can pull faces at him. He doesn't like that either. And, um, <laughs> you can, um, oh, you can do all sorts of things. You can, um, blow out his mat. Yes, Mr. Sykes. Uh, undue hesitation again. Jury, undue hesitation. Hands up if so. Two hands, three oh, hands. Oh. <laughs> that had Hoffnung in transports of delight. Um, at this point, the score is ten to the men against seven to the women. Jack Train, it might happen to any of us. What to do when you're telling a rude story and realize a lady is present? Starting Maggie. We are not amused. <laughs> the Colonel and myself, as you know, are great friends. Therefore, it is we from now on. We were in a hostelry some time ago, and we were talking and telling a story, and suddenly a lady came in, so we realized we were making a faux pas. Don't ask me to spell it. But we're making this faux pas, and we said to her, Oh, you're over 21, aren't you? And she said, yes. She was very proud. Actually, she was 64. And <laughs> therefore, we realized she would be so proud because we realized that she was so young, when she really wasn't, that she let us carry on with the joke. Actually, the joke we told was one we'd heard from a lady. So it is not as easy as you think to, to keep clean in this conversation I'm doing at the moment, but we are trying very hard. <laughs> This conversation I'm doing at the moment. Remove a point. We. We. I'm. We. I'm. Jury, did you hear it? I'm, was it not? Mm. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll give, the, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, if doubt there is. Um, ten seconds more, Jack. We are grateful. <laughs> of course, the joke was only a wee one, so... <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> Violetta, a slice of French history. Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette was a wonderful woman, and as English people probably know, she went through a wonderful film with Tyrone Power just a few <laughs> years ago. Of course, in this film, she didn't do a lot of the things that you and I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. Well, at the end of round two, the score is 11 to the men against 6 to the women. At this point, we let Gerald Hoffnung out of the doghouse. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we finish with that password, I'm going to interrupt the game for just a minute. The man who thought up this program, who devised it and produces it and rings bells in it, Ian Messeter, is off to South Africa, and this is the last time he'll be with us on his program for a long, long time. And it seemed a pity that he should get away without having a go at this game himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, my
by popular demand of both the teams that he sets these brain teasers to, he's going to take some of his own medicine. I'm taking over the sound effects for one minute. I'm pushing him in front of the microphone. And anybody can buzz him as he talks for one minute on how I came to think up this game without using the word I. Just a moment while we change places. Come on, Ian, and start him, Maggie. We were sitting in the bath one morning when <laughs> we... <laughs> When we heard the telephone ring downstairs and our wife went to answer it <laughs> and she said, one minute please, he's in the bath. So we thought that's a good title, he's in the bath, would do for any program. <laughs> and we then went out and we bought a lot of buzzers, rather silly looking instruments, <laughs> and um, <laughs> we put them in rows each side of microphones and there the buzzers sit and, <laughs> and then we thought we'd have some passwords to be passed across the front of the audience and that's why we call them passwords <laughs> and um, are we still talking from have we finished yet no i don't <laughs> margo holden Margot Holden, why did you buzz? He's fishing for time. Yes. <laughs> hesitating, in other words, right, Jory? Yes, yes, was he yes. hesitating? Yes. Yes, he was. <laughs> Three hands go up. It's unanimous. Well, he got to 59 and a half seconds before he was buzzed, so I think that's jolly good, Ian, and we'll let you off there. <laughs> now he knows what it feels like. And by the way... Never again, never again. <laughs> Ian also records for us the passwords. He does them in the morning before we do the programme in the mysterious tones of the keeper of the password, and he does it by putting his head in a piano. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go over now and hear his recording of the password for round three. The password for the third round is small. S-M-A-L-L, -L, small. Right, let battle recommence. Martina Main, will you start round three by talking for one minute on marionettes? Oh, I've, I've always wanted to be a marionette because they have a wonderful time of it. They um, don't do any of the work. It's all done for them. And they don't lift a finger. They dance all day long and hit each other. And uh, their faces are painted, beautifully, permanently painted. They don't have to worry about their lipstick. They don't have to clean their teeth. They don't even go to the dentist, and, uh, well, they don't. Uh, I've never heard of it. Uh, also, they, um, they sort of, on friendly terms with the person behind them who does all the work, you see. Uh, lots of producers nowadays, theatrical producers, wish that actors and actresses were marionettes, um, and that's why I'm having screws fitted in all my knees and joints, and, uh, I'm going to have uh, wires and strings put up so that I'm more manageable that way. <laughs> um. That'll be handy, Martina. Thank you very much. <laughs> Eric Sykes, do you remember these back in your youth? Hundreds and thousands. Well, hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands, that's and a thousands. lot of... Uh, and of who? <laughs> Sweets. The subject is hundreds and thousands. Little sweets. Little, little sweets. sweets. Uh, hundreds and thousand little sweets. <laughs> talking about. Not, they're calling them little tiny ones. Well, uh, I think this is a ruse. I think he's getting away with time. Start him again, Maggie. <laughs> well, I, I think I led a very sheltered childhood. <laughs> because... We never had um, hundreds of thousands sweets. We had jelly babies. <laughs> and I, I do hope that these are the same kind. Otherwise, all I know about hundreds and thousands is that it's a lot. And I, <laughs> I really didn't get that for a penny. Now, in those days, when they had hundreds and thousands, little boys had hoops and they used to bowl them up to the sweet shops and say, have you got hundreds and thousands? <laughs> and they used to buy them. <laughs> now, these... These hundreds and thousands are very tasty sweets, and they, they give you what is known as hundreds and thousands hiccups. <laughs> which, 
which, when you chew them, if you chew them, you're all right. You just get hundreds and thousands of something else. But if you eat them quickly, you get this hundred and... The word is very reminiscent for me. You see, in the Middle East, there are hundreds and thousands of flies. <laughs> now, you see, although flies... <laughs> The expression of relief on Mr. Sykes's face is quite something. Margot Holden, your experience of clothes moths. Clothes moths? Oh, well, they're little friends of mine. Every time I open a drawer, they all fly out. Um, they, they're funny little things. They're kind of a grey or mauvey, fawny colour, um, going down to brown. I think they've got four wings. I'm not sure. They've got six legs. I think they've got eyes on sticks. <laughs> and... Um, I, and um, they, um, oh, it isn't the clothes moths that eat clothes in your holes in your clothes, though. You see, the clothes moths lay little tiny eggs, which turn to caterpillars or grubs, as you call them, and they nibble through all your clothes and they roll themselves up in it and make a chrysalis, and that's how you get holes in your clothes. And of course, after the chrysalis, out comes the moth. <laughs> you know what I mean. And, um, <laughs> I've always wanted a moth as a pet, but um, they do not make very good pets, not like fleas. You can't train them to do things. And um, lots of people don't like moths. I don't mind them myself. Some of them are very, very pretty. They can be all colours and some are very, very tiny. Others are very, very big. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> Score 12 to the men against 8 to the women and a password to go. This should give you a clue. The subjects we've had so far, marionettes, hundreds and thousands, clothes moths, and now, Jack Train, your subject is pins and needles. Pins and needles. First of all, we must come straight to the point. <laughs> My wife and I are very fond of pin, pins and needles. Actually, she likes pins and I like needles. So we never see eye to eye. <laughs> Naturally. We never steal them because they're steel already. <laughs> but pins and needles are very important things. They're very small. You can buy... <laughs> you can buy them hundreds of thousands. <laughs> <laughs> That's the password, Jack. Small is the password. Carry on for another 37 seconds. Pins and needles being very small, you can... <laughs> <laughs> Violetta, washing clothes. I very seldom wash my own clothes because I think it's quite dreadful. I put them in a lot of suds and they come up just as black as they were when they went in. In spite of using all these wonderful things which say so and so, you know, advertisements wash whiter, or at least they should say those same things wash blacker. But the thing is to get, I think, no, there is a lot of wind and it's going to rain. Then just put the clothes on a clothesline and wait till the rain comes down and then they get washed. And then very shortly after the wind comes and they get dry again. Of course, there is an old fashioned way with soap. But uh, this is rather unpleasant because it makes your hands all wet. And I hate to have my hands wet, but... Well, that's it. That is far, that's as far as we can go. The winners are the men's team by 14 points to nine. And that means that the men have finally won this series by seven games to five with one game drawn. The individual scores of the two teams, just for the record, men's team Jack Train, four, Eric Sykes, six, Gerard Hoffnung, four, women's team Margot Holden, four, Martina Main, four, Violetta, one. And that's the end of this present series of One Minute, Please. We hope to be back on the air again soon. In the meantime, it's goodbye from Margot Holden, Martina Main, Violetta, Gerard Hoffnung, Jack Train, Eric Sykes, the jury, our scorer, Maggie Stratton, our producer, sound effects man, and this week's speaker, Ian Messiter, to whom we all wish the best of luck overseas, and Roy Plumley. Goodbye. Thank you.